Welcome back. We're going to just jump right in today. I'm not going to do too much of an intro because there's a lot I want to show and I don't want to make this video any longer than it has to be. So today we have to make this V-belt pulley and this is a little bit complicated for one reason and one reason only and that's because this is very clearly a lathe part. It would be uh, pretty simple and pretty straightforward to mount this in a lathe chuck and take a skim pass over this, bring it to diameter, do this V as well as do the inner diameter to make sure they're perfectly concentric and then set it up on the mill or a shaper if you had it and broach this keyway. I don't have a mill, or sorry, I don't have a lathe and I don't have a shaper. So instead we're going to do this entire project on the milling machine and we're going to try to improvise to find ways to make sure that this is perfectly concentric. And if I bring up the stock here you can see it light there this is the way we're going to do it so this is uh the stock that you can see here in the light grayish color is going to be the part that we mount into the spindle we're going to use the precision matthews as what i'll call a horizontal or a vertical cnc lathe so we're machining in a three quarter inch arbor that matches the profile of a TTS tool. I can actually go over to the design environment and show you this a little bit easier. <clears throat> so we're gonna machine this blank on the mill and this raised face is so that the contact with the spindle is minimal so it keeps it aligned pretty well and doesn't have rough uneven edges and this three quarter inch shank is going to go into the TTS collet and just direct mount into the spindle that'll give us access to this entire outer diameter the inner diameter we're going to do on the mill in a lathe chuck and bore that out to perfect uh, diameter and then this keyway we are going to broach with a custom uh, brooch that we're going to make on the mill as well out of some A2 tool steel. So thanks for stopping by. Stick by and we'll see if this works out as planned. Here I have a piece of three and three quarter inch aluminum stock. I'm going to chop this on my evolution saw here. So I'm cutting off a piece that's uh, three and a half inches I think tall and then I just squared the top of those faces with a face mill to make sure that they were nice and clean. Here I am with the shear hog and I'm coming in and roughing down the outside perimeter of both that three quarter inch shank that we're going to use for the TTS tool and the outside diameter that we're going to in the future skin to make sure it's concentric with the spindle. So there it is just after roughing. Right here I have the boring bar set up and making sure that I bore below the face where the spindle is going to make contact with the face of this part right here. So I did this basically manually. I lowered the boring head until it was where I wanted it, called that Z0, and then just in MDI had it go to Z0 at a feed rate of 10 inches a minute. And you'll see here I'm checking a micrometer on the boss and that's just over three quarters of an inch the actual TTS tools are about five tenths below three quarters of an inch so that's what I'm shooting for taking a couple spring passes there where I didn't adjust the cut and you can see just about a half a thousandth under three quarters of an inch <clears throat> Now I'm going to take another measurement in a different place, just to confirm that. Alright, looks good. Then I flipped it over and took this top hat off here. This is actually something, I made two of these. The first one I messed up, which you'll see a little bit later. Uh, there was absolutely no reason for me to need to do this. I left a half an inch of stock that I could hold on to during this milling operation. In the second one, I just held on to about 30 thousandths of stock, flipped it over, and then roughed that as well to the outside diameter and didn't waste all of this stock. So I guess you get smarter as you do things, but this was a waste of a half inch of stock, but it, it gave me a little opportunity to play with this face mill and see how much I could take in aluminum. 
loading up the spindle pretty good there. It's a hundred thousand step to cut and full width. This is obviously sped up. This is about five times normal speed. Maybe three times. I don't, I don't remember exactly. But I'm typically moving in about 25 inches a minute. That high-pitched whining noise you can hear is because I left just a tiny little sliver. and Not a good idea with a face mill. It's a great way to rip it out of the three-draw chuck, but it worked out here. Alright, so here we go. We're going to give it a shot using this milling machine as a lathe. I have a lathe bit chucked up into the the M-lock vise there and then the tool is or the part is in the spindle as we saw I am doing a skim pass until it cleans up it's actually the second skim pass I did which is why it looks so shiny before we started here and that just makes sure that the outer diameter is perfectly concentric with the spindle feeds and feeds here are terrible doing a great job making a bird's nest but it's working Running a lot of this at fast speed because there's no need for you guys to just stare at me making this part in, in the mill, but pretty happy with how that came out. Doing a cleanup pass here. <clears throat> I actually did a couple of these to walk it into size and make sure it was the right diameter. And there you go. This is what it looked like just out of the spindle. Looks like a lathe part. That's that new Core 5 from Maritool. Or sorry, from Kenna Metal that I'm trying out. <clears throat> and here I put a couple uh, gauge pins on top of the three jaws just to space it out. This is one of the most important things here. Here I am lining up the spindle concentric uh, with the bore so I made sure I was concentric so that I could be cutting this hole in the center here roughly concentric I could have just picked that up with the Heimer but it was easier to do with the dial indicator <clears throat> coming in with a shear hog here and roughing out that 50 millimeter bore in the center here I absolutely love this tool. This is not something I'd actually used before. I only used this for the first time the, about a week ago and started building up some feeds and feeds and I absolutely loved it. So that was real speed and we're going to pick it up here in a second. Just kind of jumped forward. I'm going at 10 thousandths feed per tooth taking a hundred thousandths width, uh, or sorry, a hundred thousandths depth and sixty six hundred thousandths width. So almost full slot and using this sort of like a high feed mill and it's been working great. Coming back in with that core five. And this is actually plunging down and taking out that little uh, three quarter inch boss at the bottom it's a, it's flipped upside down so the part that we were holding in the spindle before was facing down there and here we go again uh, this is really the most important part I am indicating on the outside perimeter making sure it's a tenth indicator and you can see I have about a tenth of a, a ten thousandth of an inch of run out and now I'm going to come back in with a boring head and bore this perfectly concentric with that outside diameter so again, that, this is probably the most important step here of all of them. Boring this to get the right fit that I want and making sure it's concentric with the outside so I don't get some crazy run out, which could lead to a lot of vibration in this spindle. <clears throat> As I said, I, I had to make two of these, so uh, this is actually both of them sitting on the, the mill, and I'm showing you with a bore gauge that I got the inner diameters spot on within... Uh, I guess we'll see here. Looks like within about three ten thousandths of an inch. So with the pulley made, 
The next step is to make, sorry, with it made with the exception of the keyway that needs to go in it, as well as I have to put a set screw in the side of it. Won't bore you and show you that part of it, but this was a bit interesting. There's a number of ways I could have done this. There are plenty of commercial brooches out there. I could have bought a set of brooches or just a single eight millimeter brooch. I could have honestly done this by hand because all the keyway does is make sure that it doesn't split or slip. But the unevenness of that keyway would potentially lead to a little bit of unbalance. And I have OCD, so if it was uneven, I would not like that. So as you can see, the tip here is eight millimeters. That's the size of the keyway that we're shooting for. And basically, I just took this piece of steel and made sure that I gave it some taper on all edges that weren't this front face right here. So I wanted to make sure this was the only part of the brooch that was scraping parts away and it would lead away from that edge in every other direction so you can see this bottom face is a bit of an angle just to give it a shearing action the back here is thinner than the front so it tapers away the side walls taper to the top so that i make sure as i go down i'm not rubbing along the shaft or shank of this as i broach it in order to hold this i just put it in a 3 8 inch TTS holder. This is a 3 8 inch ground flat piece of A2 tool steel and I just milled a 3 8 inch boss in the front of it here and that's what mounted into the ER collet. And then I just made sure there was enough height between the tip and up here where this radius starts so that I could broach straight through the pulley. And this actually worked really well as a bit surprised it was broaching at 110 inches a minute plunge and doing two thousandths uh, steps so I was stepping into the cut two thousandths of an inch and shaving off two thousandths every pass and really it came out perfectly I coated this as a bunch of drill uh, patterns so it just thought it was drilling with the spindle off over and over again at 110 inches a minute and that worked great it was a can cycle that took no more than a minute or two to create and the total time from generating this brooch in CAD to making the brooch was probably less than 45 minutes and I really like trying new things out and I love cutting tool steel it's just so much fun on the machine and I thought this would be a fun project so I'll show you some of the cutting of this and then we'll get into actually broaching here we go. You can see I actually have this tilted at an angle when I put that in there. That was intentional. Uh, so when I'm milling this boss right now, the idea was that would give me that front face lead. Uh, so I wouldn't have to mill that. Ooh, that chatter sounds terrible. Um, but the idea was this would give me a bit of draft on the front face of it. It turned out not to be enough. So I went back in and manually machined that just back and forth to take some more off the front face of that because it was rubbing when I first tried this out and giving me a lot of deflection. So here, um, this is sped up as you can tell. This is that other kind of metal tool that I picked up that worked great. The finish looks beautiful. Tool steel is wonderful to machine if you get a chance. I definitely recommend it. Got a lot of stick out here and there's almost nothing sitting in the vise there which is why you're getting that high speed or high pitch squeal not great for cutter life but for a one-off it worked fine if you're going to hold on to a piece with a bunch sticking out and you want to get any rigidity at all Holding on with this very little at the end of the jaw is going to cause this jaw to twist, no matter how nice your vise is. So put some blocking of the same thickness or just a little thinner than the piece you're working on, or it'll cause it to clamp evenly. So this is just a 1.125 inch stack of gauge blocks and my 1.125 inch stock. So this is nice and tight in there for doing some lighter cutting. Here we go, I'm just taking the bottom edge of this off to give me that shearing action. You can see it there. And then now I am roughing the side taper on both sides of this. This actually ended up being something that 
didn't look very appealing so I did this and then I went back and decided I wanted to make it a little deeper uh, and did a couple more adaptives and I didn't have enough stock to go back and do a contour or clean up pass because I, I hit eight millimeters and I didn't want to take extra off so you can see the sides of this when I'm done look like they have it almost looks like a lot of chatter it's actually not it's just a roughing strategy that I wasn't able to clean up because I didn't think I had enough but it, it really doesn't matter what this tool looks like it's going to be used this one time and never again And here it is in a TTS collet. This is actually a knockoff TTS holder that I got off of eBay. I picked up four of them for $10 a piece, and I like them so far. And you can see it looks like a bit of chatter there. That's, again, just that adaptive toolpath showing. And if you're wondering why or how I was able to get my spindle locked on a Precision Matthews PM30 because yours doesn't have a spindle lock. I'll show you a trick. That's not shady at all. Crescent wrench, a little bit of wire wrapped around a bolt. Yeah, that's a little shady, but it worked. And that's it for today, so I appreciate you guys stopping by, and you can see some of the chips that came off of there. It really does look like a shaper made this, but I appreciate it, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one in a couple days.